I'm Steve Marshall, one of the pastors on staff here at Willowbrook United Methodist Church. We've all heard the expression, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But I think the Bible can help us to do more than just make the best of a bad situation. During this unprecedented time of COVID-19 virus, nationwide protests, and historically high unemployment, we have been given an oversupply of lemons. I'd like to share with you a story of a guy who knows what it's like to have a bad day. A bricklayer had an accident on a construction site and had to file a detailed report for his insurance company. This is what he wrote. I'm a bricklayer by trade, and on the date of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a new six-story building. When I completed my work, I discovered that I had a sizable pile of bricks left over, and rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel using a pulley that was attached to the edge of the roof on one side of the building. After securing the rope at ground level, I went back up the roof, swung the barrel out, and loaded the bricks into the barrel. I then went to the ground and untied the rope, holding it tightly to ensure a slow descent of the bricks. Now, you will notice I stated in block number two of the accident report form that I weigh 150 pounds. The bricks, I was soon to discover, weighed slightly more than 500 pounds. My weight was not enough to keep me down. And due to my surprise at being jerked off the ground by the weight of the bricks, I lost my presence of mind and I forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded up the side of the building at a rather rapid rate of speed. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming down. This explains my fractured skull and broken collarbone. The collision with the barrel slowed me down only slightly. I continued up the building at an alarming rate, unable to stop until my right hand was jammed into the pulley at the top of the building. This explains my three broken fingers. Fortunately, I was able to hold on to the rope in spite of my pain. It was at this time the barrel of bricks slammed against the ground, tearing the bottom out of the barrel. Devoid of the weight of the bricks, the barrel now weighed approximately 50 pounds. I refer you again to my weight in block number two. As you might imagine, I began a rather rapid descent down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel on its way up. This accounts for my broken ankle and the lacerations along the left side of my body. This encounter with the barrel slowed me down enough to minimize my injuries when I landed on the pile of bricks on the ground. I'm sorry to report that as I laid on my back, looking at the empty barrel six stories above me, I again lost my presence of mind and I let go of the rope. The empty barrel weighed more than the rope, so it came zooming back down, and this explains my broken right arm. He concluded with, I hope you find this information useful as you process my claim. Now, this may not be a true story. I almost hope it isn't. But it's a funny way of looking at something we can all identify with. Do you know how he feels? Well, we all at one time or another in our lives, find ourselves in situations where nothing seems to be going right. Many of us are facing challenges right now, facing the fear and loneliness of quarantine, anxiety over the civil unrest gripping our nation, and so much more. Maybe it's your job or your marriage or your financial situation or your health, or maybe it's all of the above. But the good news is, Whatever your problems may be, it is possible to face adversity with confidence. Paul wrote the letter to the Philippians during a time when life had seemingly given him nothing but lemons. He was in jail, living under the threat of death while being separated from the people he cared about. 
And on top of that, he knew his enemies were celebrating his imprisonment. But in spite of this, Philippians is a joyful, optimistic letter in which Paul shows us how to make lemonade when life gives us lemons. Paul begins this passage by listing all of the good things that have happened as a result of his imprisonment. In verse 12, he says, this has helped to spread the gospel. In verse 13, he says, the brethren have become more confident in speaking the word. And in verses 15 to 18, he says, regardless of people's motives, Christ is being proclaimed. Now, let's take a look at your problems. Ask yourself, what good can come out of this situation? Well, the benefits may not always be obvious. In fact, they may be hidden, but you will find them if you look for them. Well, Corrie ten Boom was living in a German concentration camp. Her entire body became infested with lice, making a bad situation even worse. She was complaining about it one day, and her sister reminded her of the Bible verse that says, in everything give thanks. And she challenged Corey to give thanks for the lice. And Corey's response was, how can I give thanks to God for lice? But she made a choice to do it anyway. Later, she found out that the lice had actually protected her from being sexually assaulted by the German soldiers. Every problem has benefits. We just need to learn to look for them. Paul's top priority was the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wasn't concerned with putting out the fire of his imprisonment. He was concerned with spreading the fire of the gospel. He didn't complain about the unfair treatment he had received. He didn't ask the Philippian church to start a petition drive demanding his release. He wasn't worried at all about the effect his adversity would have on him. He was only thinking about how his imprisonment would impact the spread of Christianity. Another way to turn those lemons into lemonade is to change your perspective. There are a few things even the worst problems can't do. They can't separate you from God's love. They can't separate you from God's family, and they can't separate you from God's protection. God is bigger than any problem you will ever face. And God has the ability to turn any problem into a either way I win situation. See how Paul puts his adversity in perspective in verses 20 to 21. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. In other words, Paul is saying that even the worst thing that could happen to him is still a win situation, because then he will be where he really wants to be, with the Lord. With an attitude like that, how can you lose? The Chinese word for crisis is a combination of two words, dangerous and opportunity. Every problem you face is an opportunity for God to accomplish something in your life. And it will most likely involve helping people. Paul recognized this. He had committed his life to helping people grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ. So prison wasn't an obstacle for him. It was an opportunity 
to write letters to churches he couldn't visit. I'm sure he didn't know at the time that those letters would become scripture. Nobody likes living through a crisis. Given a choice, we would certainly choose a less painful path. The question is, how will you use that adversity to help others? Every problem we encounter has hidden opportunities for ministry. When we search for the opportunities, the problems in our lives become powerless. So what do you do when life gives you lemons? Give your life over to God and let God help you make lemonade. To God be the glory. Amen. I hope you'll share this message with others so that they too may be blessed by God's word.